What's up guys, main man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, and welcome to uh, what's well, gonna be a pretty big recording, I think, how to pick your main in Tekken 8. It's a really fun video to make, because I get to just, you know, move my cursor here from character to character, and tell you a little bit about them, and I do love a lot of the characters in this game, so I have quite a few words to say. Uh, in short, I would just say, pick the character you think looks cool, that's what I did. A million years ago before you were born I looked at Kazuya and I was like Jesus he's so cool well he didn't exactly look <laughs> that cool in Tekken 1 or Tekken 2 well he was really cool in Tekken 2 he was the final boss and he had the best theme emotionless passion but I also really always loved his stance very calm and collected and his his single strikes like really hard hitting demon god fist wind god fist so in my opinion, honestly, just go with the character you find looks looks cool. Um, that's the most important, that you have fun when you play the game. And if, if you feel your character is cool and there's a heavy impact to their stuff, like you're, you're gonna like playing them. Uh, but so I'm gonna talk about them, and I'm gonna have chapters on the video. So if you go down below into the description, you'll be able to see the characters. Uh, and I'm gonna start with beginner characters, so I'm gonna start by recommending characters that are, you know, really good for do those of you who are new to Tekken. Uh, starting things out, and I'm gonna explain why, so we're gonna go through beginner characters, and then intermediate and advanced, and again, if you want to s jump to a specific character, you'll be able to see it below. Um, so, <coughs> I'm gonna start, and I, I can also say that a character that's good for beginners, in my opinion, can be all around, you know? Uh, can teach you Tekken, they they do okay. I'm gonna talk about Jin first because he he does well with every aspect of Tekken, but a good beginner character also doesn't have, you know, very complicated mechanical skill, like execution, difficult inputs and notations, in my opinion. They keep it rather simple, and then they can also have very effective attacks, like Asuka. The thing with Asuka is that she, she, she does stuff, and it's easy to do, it's very easy to execute for you, the game plan is very simple, and it's very tricky to counter for your opponent. Uh, but we're, we're, let's get into it, let's just start. Okay, so Jin Kazama, like, why, why is he good for beginners? Well, first off, first off, like, he is the hero. I mean, he is the shonen protagonist of this game, he's cool, uh, used to be exceptionally difficult to play. Like in Tekken 7, I shit you not, he's he's like top 3 difficulty. He has very high mechanical skill demands, but also a very complicated move list where you have to understand when to use every single attack. They're very specific. But in this game, they simplified him a ton, and I think it's because uh, they wanted the uh, beginners to feel they could play as the hero. That's what I think, and I, you know, uh, I kind of miss Tekken 7 style Jin, but the more I think about it, the, the, the more I think it makes sense that beginners can play as the hero. So, Jin can do absolutely everything. There's nothing he can't do, and he does everything exceptionally well. So, if there's any specific aspect of Tekken you're looking into, like, um, you know, a 50-50 mix-up, mid-low, what is poking, hmm, what's a good counter-hit game? Uh, what can I do with throws? 1, 2, 1 plus 2, like, he, he has everything. And punishment, so you, you can, like, try everything out. He's also insanely strong, which is gonna help a lot, right? Taking those Ws. Uh, and he's really cool, everything looks super explosive and dynamic, so... Um, and you have an easy electric. Uh, if you love electrics, DA, DA, the, the one he does. Uh, you can just, it's built into his move list. You know, so, uh, Jin I recommend very much for beginners. Um, and now I'm gonna talk about his mom, June, that comes back after, I mean, how long has it been? Jesus Christ, where have you been, my darling, my waifu? Uh, June is, uh, a lot like her Tag 2 counterpart. Uh, she has a lot of stances, a lot of strings. She very easily overwhelms her opponent with pressure, uh, Crazy pressure, actually. You, you'll notice this if you play against her. Uh, so crazy strings, stances, very overwhelming. 
uh, on top of this has now projectiles. <laughs> she can go into mirage stance, I think it's back one plus two, and she throws really big projectiles. She can do launching projectiles that come out of the ground and then straight up projectiles in your face. Her uh, heat smash is a huge projectile. Um, so that sounds pretty crazy, right? But on top of this, she has incredibly high damage, uh, be it in terms of punishment or combo. Her combo damage is ridiculous. Uh, some of the best strings and also pretty all around if she wants to. So, in my opinion, very overwhelming character, very tricky for your opponent to deal with, strong projectile attacks, super strong in general, no mechanical skill. So, uh, June, I, I very much recommend uh, for you guys who are starting out. And then we're gonna take a look at Law. And this, this is also an interesting case, because Law, in Tekken 4, he got the Dragon Sign Stance, where he does an attack like his standing uh, for free, right kick, left kick, and then with heavy, heavy execution skill, you can get a, a really quick stance transition into like the craziest pressure you've ever seen. And this he had up until Tekken 7, so he was seen as, you know, a pretty complicated character to play, like challenging. But just like Jin, they simplified all of it. Because, again, I think they feel like, wow, he's so cool, you know, inspired by Bruce Lee. A lot of beginners are gonna play him. He looks so cool in this game, and I love, like, his facial animations. Just how, uh, um, God, what is the word I'm looking for? He's so expressive. Like, I, I love his, uh, his facial animations. Uh, but a fun character to play. Also easy for beginners. Just like his best friend, uh, Paul. He's incredibly all-round, and just like Jin, like a very all-round character, so strong offense with his uh, Dragon Sign stance transitions, which you, do, which you do now by simply holding forward. That's it, there's no mechanical skill anymore, just hold forward between attacks like your while standing 4 or 4-3, uh, many other transitions he has, um, and a very varied game plan with frame pressure strong 50 50 with a slide he has a uh, strong keep out with his magic four his down forward two um you know it's like uh, and strong strong punishment really strong like i can't stress enough how you have a really good blend of strong offense and strong defense paul it's so nice that paul and law are best friends and we're both really the same here in that um, really strong defensive utility and strong uh, offensive utility. Re really nice blend and cocktail there, I have to say. Uh, and now we're going to look at... Sorry, I'm just writing notes really quickly. And now we're going to look at uh, Asuka. Asuka, in my opinion, is the easiest character to play in the game. So if you want a character that is very exceptionally non-challenging, right? Where you, you can relax a lot as you're playing. I think Asuka might be your go-to character. Uh, not only that, but she also hits really hard. So the, the thing about Asuka is that you're constantly doing attacks that have very, very strong built-in defense. So, you press a lot of these buttons, like for example, her most famous attack is back free. This is a highly evasive launcher. It's like, you, you've probably seen uh, Devil Jin, really cool popular character. You, he does his Samsara, he presses up for and he does a huge backflip. That steals the turn, right? That is very evasive. But Devil Jin is really punishable after that. She has that attack when she presses back free. And it comes out, it just looks a little bit different. It's super evasive, steals the turn, launches the opponent on normal hit. But not only that, like, <coughs> if your opponent blocks that, Asuka lands really far away, unsafe, and she's very hard to punish. And not only that, if she wants to, she can add hits to it. She can do the back free into a low sweep, that counter it launches with back free for free. It's that much safer than it should be, and it also has a built-in mix-up on block. And then she has a million other of these attacks. 
like can, can, her down for two, up for three, her long ass parry. You know what I'm talking about. And she has a safe mid launcher in one plus two. Quite obnoxious mix ups. She has a throw game if you want to use that. Very oppressive heat. Very oppressive. Uh, so, in my opinion, like, if you want someone who's a little bit more chill and where you can just do stuff and not worry about spacing or movement, just do stuff, and your opponent most likely will just fall for it, or even if he blocks it, he has a really hard time punishing you for it, right? So very easy to use, very hard to counter. I, I think Asuka sort of takes the cake, I have to say. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about Mr. Leroy. Coolest newcomer in Tekken 7. By far, I would say, and one of the coolest uh, character designs ever in Tekken. So he does the Ip Man, Wing Chun, you know, a million punches. Uh, extremely overwhelming character to deal with. Has a million strings to pressure your guard, or is it low, is it mid? Does it go into his... Hermit stance where he applies crazy mix-ups on you, 50-50s. Some of the most overwhelming offense in the game. Uh, another character with overwhelming offense, you know what I'm talking about. Huarang, right? But Leroy just has such varied strings. And with Huarang, you actually need some uh, execution skill. And you need to link manually one hit into another as you're transitioning from his stances, right? The flamingo left-right, etc. Leroy, you just do these pre-canned uh, strings and you just do them over and over. Uh, he also chips greatly with his machine gun strikes. Uh, you can take out your pimp cane, do a strong mid or a strong low. Um, extremely overwhelming. It's just hardcore pitbull offense uh, and it's really awkward for your opponent. Uh, I very much recommend Leroy to beginners, and he also looks so cool. He's so cool, the old man. So, Le overwhelm your opponent, basically. Uh, and next up is Lord Loss, who has never looked better. Uh, just for fun, seriously, Google what this guy looks like in Tekken 7. <laughs> basically, a scarecrow that's been out uh, collecting dust for... for 30 years, uh, but here he, he just looks so, he's so good looking. Um, I still don't like the hair though, but uh, oh well. Uh, great character for beginners. Again, there's not a lot of mechanical skill involved. He's one of the characters that were added in Tekken 6, and you'll notice that these two, they have a lot of story together. Like if you play Tekken 6 scenario campaign, you know that a uh, a human being can fall in love with a robot, and it can actually be beautiful, and that's a real girlfriend. Um, I learned that in Tekken 6. It uh, was a big deal for me. Uh, but so, well, they... <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? They, they have a story connection, but not only that, they have a gameplay connection. Uh, it, through Tekken 6, they both... Uh, share a style that was implemented in that game and it's basically press a button to whoosh zoom across the stage like seriously dash 10 meters straight away and hit the opponent like super anime shit <laughs> well you can actually just you can actually just look at him and you're like okay it makes sense you, you saw it immediately uh but yeah he, he's very anime he flies everywhere while saying uh, what, what does it he say? He, I think he goes... Mood? Uh, something like that. And it's basically... Yeah, I dash across the screen, pressing buttons. It's really good for beginners because, again, you don't really have to mind uh, spacing or movement too much. You press buttons and the character does the movement for you. He has stuff that goes forward, he has stuff that goes backwards, he has stuff that goes up. Uh, and then he transitions into his stances, dynamic entry, silent entry, and then a new stance, which is quite strong. Don't remember the name of it. Um, that's not the one you're going to use the most. Uh, it's going to be dynamic entry. Um, but they have really strong mix-ups. So basically, 
yeah, handles, movement and spacing for you, press buttons, going to mix-ups, throw strong mix-ups, you have a gigantic orbital, you have a big hell sweep from stance, um, easy to execute combos that are unbelievably strong and have infinite wall carry. Yeah, I do think Lars is a really good pick for beginners, and he also looks really, really cool, in my opinion. Uh, and after that, let's just go to Alyssa. Uh, and it's basically the same as uh, as Lars. You know, it's uh, she handles the movement for you. She's very overwhelming. Dashes everywhere. Has a lot of strong strings to to throw into. God, I feel like she's staring into my soul. Jesus. <laughs> has a lot of strong strings to throw against the opponent, but also very tricky. A chainsaw game. Uh, she has a stance called like destruction or something. And here she has chainsaw attacks. And this is the most annoying thing that can happen to you. As a <laughs> being on the receiving end in Tekken. You'll know what I'm talking about once it's happened to you a few times. She goes into destructive mode with the chainsaws. And now she has the craziest frames, right? On block. And you're like, you have no clue what to do or how to get out of it. And she's also helped by the fact that she's not as popular as you think. Uh, your opponents won't see her that often. So this bullshit you do is going to be super effective because you're going to knowledge check like crazy. And they're going to have no clue. Uh, and it's hard to learn the matchup because you're going to see her so uh, seldom. Not often, seldom. Uh, and really strong knowledge check, which helps beginners. Very awkward gimmicky attacks like... A rocket launcher that hits high and launches, if they're not ready for it, they, they just die and you get the round for free. Uh, and again, closes the gap in half a second. Uh, yeah, I would say a ver very good character for beginners. Uh, and then we're, we're gonna go to our first uh, newcomer, which is uh, Azucena, the, the coffee queen. Uh, so Azucena is again a very overwhelming, aggressive character. Uh, she's actually a blend- <laughs> Jesus, can you stay focused, lads? Oh, she's just gonna do it over and over. This is gonna be impossible. Uh, qu quirky coffee queen here. Uh, but she's a blend of, uh, Katarina, Lucky Chloe- I don't know if you played Tekken 7, but there were newcomers in that game that weren't that popular. Uh, three ladies called Josie, uh, Lucky Chloe, Katarina. They were so unpopular that uh, they were like, and I kind of saw this one coming. They were like, okay, scratch those. And then we got Azucena instead, and she's sort sort of like a blend of of everyone. So she's quite all right, all right, <laughs> all round. <laughs> she has every tool she needs, but is also extremely overwhelming for the opponent pressure style. And she's got a very interesting, I almost want to say dance system, but she has a stance that has built-in evasion. She can go into the stance by pressing 4-3-4, four, four. she leans in and says, Café? No, she actually says, uh, Facile, I think. I think that's easy, right, or something. And she can access the stance also through a lot of attacks. When she's in the stance, you have to, opponent has to check her with mids. But if your opponent doesn't know that, well, uh, if they do a high or a low, she automatically evades or, or counterattacks. I think when she's in heat, she automatically counterattacks. And she can launch. Or she can knock down. Um, so again, it's, 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 she has some interesting things going on. But in general, just strong on knowledge check, strong on pressure. Uh, very tricky character to handle for the opponent, so very suiting for beginners, I would say. Uh, and then I'm going to do Kuma and Panda, and I'm gonna do this in one qu quick uh, bear swipe here, because I explain one, I explain the other. Uh, this is a character I, I'm gonna say like three wins on, absolutely three W's uh, across the board. This is the uh, most rare character. In terms of character usage, Kuma and Panda are always dead last. 
We only, uh, honestly, the crown though went to Ganryu in Tekken 7. Poor Ganryu, don't expect him to be back. Um, it was so funny on his uh, on his reveal trailer for uh, for Tekken 7. He even had a gag at the start of it, a special little animation we did where he said, "I, I know you guys don't want me back, but I'm back." And it's like they, they even knew, <laughs> you know. Historically, no one wants to play Ganryu. So, in the unfortunate position of being even less popular than Kuman Panda, poor Ganryu mains. All three of you. I don't expect him to be back for this game. I'm sorry. Um, but so, the thing with Kuman Panda is that no one plays these characters. Literally, no one plays them. But they also have a super tricky playstyle. It's like, if you don't know exactly how to handle that character, you just lose straight up. And the thing is, you don't know how to handle that character because you never get to try. You never get to play against the character. So it's just three Ws. Did you know that Kuma and Panda have a very awkward neutral stance where the hurt box for their legs, so that's where you're gonna do your lows, is very far behind them. So that a lot of lows, when you're standing right in front of them, you do a low, it just whiffs. Because the, the feet and leg hitbox is so far behind. So if Kuma and Panda do one backdash, you can't hit them with lows. It's the only character to do this. And then, big as a, as a van, right? But has a ton of evasion. Ton of evasion. And very cheap attacks, where it like jumps up and looks like we're gonna smack you in the head, but go, they go low instead. And then when they're lying on the ground, you know, they have these wake-up attacks where you're just like, what's happening? Um, extremely cheap. Extremely cheap. But so if you like uh, goofy mascot characters with huge amounts of comic relief, and they troll, like playing troll, it's basically all about Kuma and Yoshi. If you like to troll people, this is where you go. But also, a lot of free wins, I would say. Uh, you're, you're only gonna encounter real problems when you encounter like veteran players, I would say. Uh, but so that's Kuma and Panda. And now I'm going to talk about Lord Fengwei. Poor man. Uh, only gets uglier with every iteration of these, this game series. He's 26 years old! He's 26 years old! Like, I, I don't know what he's doing, but, uh, yeah, he has to make his lifestyle choices. I don't know what's up, but he, he really gets fuglier with every game. Uh, but kind of suits him, you know, he's a very evil villain. But so Feng Wei, extremely all-round character. Actually resembles Jin a lot in Tekken 7 and that... He has a specific move for specific situations. So it's quite, quite complicated in that you need to know when to do what. But Feng Wei uh, just has a lot of super overwhelming, kind of perfect attacks where you can just throw them out and kind of spam them and they're just super strong and hard to deal with for the opponent. But even beyond that, again, like super all round, can do everything. Extremely hard hitting, strong combos. A, a bit like Leroy, he has a lot of overwhelming strings he can throw out. He's deceptively evasive. He presses back 1 plus 2, he takes a huge step back into Kempo stance, and then counterattacks, and can even launch from here. If you combine that with a backdash, you can't do that, you can chain them. You do backdash Kempo, and now he goes even further away. And has a very famous evasive attack in up forward 2, which is completely safe, by the way. Takes a huge step, punches far, mid, and it, it's just like a panic button that beats almost everything, and you're safe. He's got a lot of ridiculous stuff. And yeah, he's known to have the best uh, range 0, that means when you're basically kissing your opponent at this range, he, he has the best moves, the best poking. It's, it's absolutely brutal, the stuff he does there, with his jab, his back one counter hit, you know, the, almost like a one inch punch, I guess. Well, not, not really, okay, it's a, this 10 frame, kung fu, uh, talk to the hand, very strong counter hit, gives a free shoulder, 
His downforce one is neutral. <laughs> it's 14 frames, but it's actually neutral on block. So if you try and press back one, while stunning one, ridiculously strong, down two. He has a 12 frame homing mid and back four. It's, it's crazy. You gotta trust me, it's crazy. And again, no, no mechanical skills. I do recommend Fengwei for beginners. Uh, and now we're gonna talk about Mr. Uh, Claudio. Uh, Italian man and exorcist, I think. What was his exorcism clan called again? Serious? I gotta say, I, I really don't like his uh, uh, Tekken 8 outfit. This one's pretty generic. He looks like a Soul Calibur character, but I, I do prefer it that much more. Um, <clears throat> so the thing with Claudio is that you're not going to overwhelm the opponent with knowledge checks. Popular knowledge checks are annoying strings, for example and stances and bullshit moves, you know, that break your guard or evade like crazy and launch you. He doesn't really do any of that. Um, instead, he relies on just single strikes. So a little bit, you know, single strike characters. It's like Paul, it's Kazuya. But his single strikes are just absolutely brutal in the sheer amount of properties they have. It's like he presses back one and he just option selects everything out of you. He just grabs into your trousers, reaches deep, and takes all of your options. Takes all of your options from there. And, there, and, there's, and there's nothing you can do, really. So again, he presses back one, and if he's close enough to you, you can't backdash, it reaches so far. You can't sidestep, it's homing. If you block it, he's only minus five and does an automatic backstep. But if it hits, you get knocked down. And it does a chunk of damage. And it's mid, so you can't crouch it either. If you're at the wall, this serves as an end-all, be-all option. Whoop! Like, oh, you're crouching, you died. Oh, you sidestepped, you died. This leads to a wall situation for Claudio, where your key mid is your... It's like your key wall splat, it's your key homing. So again, he just he doesn't need any options, Claudio. He just does he does that, or he does a super annoying hop kick that's very evasive and it's the longest reach hop kick in the game. And if your opponent isn't punishing that, which just happens a lot in like beginner and lower intermediate ranks, like you, you're gonna get free wins, free wins, and you can play him with just a few attacks. Um, Attacks mentioned, hop kick back one, while running two, your Superman punch, very strong frames, big win on block, big win on on hit, um, sidestep four is a very strong low, uh, and then you have your uh, starburst when you land certain attacks, his hand glows blue, and now you can do really disgusting stuff. And also when you're in heat, Claudio is significantly upgraded. Now you have a projectile in 4-2, which is like full screen, uh, and you get a, a low um, heat smash, which does a ton of damage and really complements his really strong mids. He's not really meant to have strong lows considering what his mids look like, but he does. Um, and he gets, uh, like, it's almost like a DP that is safe on block, like very safe. It's like very little minus and it launches in heat. It's, it's evasive as well. It's like Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Claudio is gonna give a lot of people a lot of free W's, I think <laughs> um, Let's see Now we're gonna talk about <coughs> One of my favorites Which is Paul Phoenix and I'm just immediately going to do a cheat. I'm gonna do this <laughs> So we don't, we don't have to look to the, at the, can I talk to the manager haircut? I, but that's one, one thing that you can say about Tekken 8 Paul is that he's so fucking fun to play. He was for me in the demo, I spent like 50 hours with the demo, half of it with Paul. He's so fun to play, but I didn't mind the haircut. But now that the final game is here, you know, over full game, I can play with the real haircut, with the real Paul. And he's just, he's so fun to play. He basically is still 
Tekken, the classic Tekken Paul. It's just that they gave you a lot of fun options to use. Um, but he still remains Paul. So Paul is a really great blend between uh, offense and defense, just like Law. But where Law excels in like linking one attack into another with strong frames, Paul wants to score big counter hits and he just relies basically on single strikes. A single strong homing, strong down for two, defensive style. Hammer of the gods, forward one plus two. Pressure is uh, heat engages, forward four, up for two. Attacks that build momentum, some momentum, but mostly Paul wants... Oh god, I forgot to tell you, yeah, we're, we're, in the, we're, at, we're at our first intermediate character. Paul is our first intermediate character. And I'm gonna say, well, why is he intermediate? Why isn't he beginner? A lot of people are gonna ask this because they're gonna be like, well, it's all about to do a death fist or do a demo man. It's a little bit trickier than that, and it's that P Paul kind of needs a good read on the opponent. He's very timing based, like, well, that's why it's so hard to play at, like, high level. It's like, because if, if you don't know exactly when your opponent is going to press, you just don't have a lot going for you. You need a strong read, and then BOOM! You counterattack, and they die, because his damage is so high. Uh, <clears throat> and also... Paul needs to stand, you need to stand right here to be as effective as possible. <clears throat> this character completely changes depending on his distance. If you're one meter away, one yard, uh, you're not very threatening. You still have some options, like core circle forward free, endless reach low, core circle back to heat engager. But it's really when Paul is standing right next to you, like this, now he threatens you with a devastating 50-50 and a very strong throw game. And everything else. So, it's due to the demo man needing clean hit range to truly connect. Um, but, uh, insanely damaging, single strikes. Uh, again, it's a little bit tough in that he needs, uh, he needs time, um, no opponent's timing. But of course, like, uh, if you encounter people who let's just say, are not that good at Tekken or struggle a bit, like, you can blow them up in half a second. And again, if people don't punish his death fist, well, you're gonna use the heat death fist anyway. <laughs> but people can't punish. Um, yeah, his heat usage is absurd. Absolutely absurd. The game plan is, does the stage have walls? Check. Yes. Step two, land a heat engager. Check. Step three, do Death Fist or Demo Man. Uh, if a Death Fist lands, they just died. Because the, the wall magically appeared. He magically summoned the wall and they died. Um, so yeah, I would recommend him for intermediate players. And now we're gonna go to Huarang. And this is another character I feel where some of you might say like, Why is he intermediate? Because... Huarang, uh, basically, I just, where are the kick buttons? I do this, I just mash all of them, right? And then I take, I get Ws. I win matches. Well, you, you, you still sort of need to, to know how to link those. You need to know effective flow charts. Attack A into Z into B into F into H into A. How do I link them? So you need some time labbing his flamingo mix-ups. And it's interesting uh, that Huarang in Tekken 7, once he started flailing on you, and you know what they always start with, it's that low into a high, that's guaranteed. Down 3-4, and you're just like, you're minus 14, and now you gotta respect the next mix-up. And in, in Tekken 7, that mix-up he got from there, devastating just launched you with a really strong launcher, a million damage. Super explosive mix-ups. But the drawback was that he had a hard time getting in on the opponent. Like, P Peacekeeper, I think it's called, Ford Ford Four, a dashing kick, no tracking. Everything has zero tracking. And the homing is not that strong. Had a hard time initiating on the opponent. But once he, once he got close, you know, you died, basically. They, they sort of ch ch changed this up a ton, or flipped it in Tekken 8, and that now they gave him almost a Ken-style Dragon Lash. You know how Ken in Street Fighter 6, well, if you've played the game, 
He closes the gap, jumps in with this big kick, but it's plus one on block. He has basically exactly that. So we, we, now he goes from poor initiation to strong initiation. If he's right foot forward on you, he's motion switched. He just presses down foot free, jumps, does a very aggressive jump forward where he kicks with his left leg. This beats lows as he's jumping. It's homing mid uh, heat engager and plus one on block. It's like, so okay, now you have strong initiation. But so then they nerfed the maximum output and how explosive his uh, down 3 4 flamingo mix ups are. Now, mostly he gets knockdowns and frames and damage, but he's not gonna get a big launch on you. Uh, that changes, however, once he's in heat. Once he is in heat, he yet again gets the devastating low option and the devastating mid launcher. So, and yeah, once he is in heat and he's mashing away at you, that's a lot of fucking chip damage, right? So when you're blocking, you're like, oh, when is it my turn? Chip damage, chip damage, big mix up. Right? But still, he's going to require people to lab the character quite a bit. It's not as free getting wins with Huarang. And also, one of, one of his most important attacks, Just Frame Skyrocket, which is this big blue spark, huge launcher, safe on block at minus eight, I believe. It's a, it's a true Just Frame to do. Um, you don't need it, but you, if you want to get really good with him, you're, you're going to want to get that. Um, but so yeah, that's Horang. Uh, and now we're gonna get to Lord... Where is he? Mighty Lord King, the Jaguar Wrestler God. Let's see. <clears throat> King is, uh, also a character you might find brain dead on. Yes, you froze! Spam the froze! But ki King players are gonna relate to what I'm saying now. Uh, yeah, you might think he's annoying and cheap, but when you play king and you're trying to do your throws and someone is playing this and constantly doing attacks hugging the floor, doing attacks hugging the floor, super evasive attacks, super evasive attacks, super evasive attacks, jumps all over the fucking place. Um, uh, I mean, yeah. You know, it's just like, there's so many characters that just fly across space and time and evade everything, but he struggles against quite a few characters uh, setting up his throws. You gotta be a bit smart and like locking them down with very clever poking and then attempting the throw mix-ups. And the throws are pretty high execution, like uh, it, it's not simple doing a giant swing on a moment's notice. It's not easy. Or, or Tombstone, Tijuana Twister, Shining Wizard. <laughs> He's got a be pretty complicated move list. Um, trick, very tricky move list. Uh, if you implement <laughs> all of his unblockables, tech traps, uh, burning knuckle setups where he jumps. His Frankensteiner is an uh, inescapable throw. Uh, Jaguar dash into RKO, un unescapable, I guess. Uh, throw. Uh, is very tricky for the opponent, right? But at the same time, you need to yourself learn about all of these tricks. And again, setting up throws is not super easy. Um, but, uh, yeah, a very interesting and fun character to play, but slightly demanding, I would say. Uh, and then we have uh, Leo. Leo is exceptionally all-round and exceptionally strong. Uh, can do sort of everything. Uh, has very strong single strike content uh, in his move list. But also has a lot of tricky strings. Uh, has a stance called uh, Boki. No, that's Asuka, I think. Bo. Uh, where, where he has uh, a lot of str strong mix-up utility. Uh, the reason I put him in intermediate is that some of the tools are a little bit tricky to set up, the stance can be a little bit tricky to use, and there can be some uh, mechanical skill. Um, 
Yeah. Strong, all-round character. I'm not gonna spend too much time here with Mr. Leo. I wonder how many people are even gonna click to this chapter section. Uh, and now we're gonna go to Mr. Raven. Raven, of course, replaces Master Raven. It may, if Maybe you didn't play Tekken 7, but Raven was introduced in Tekken 5, and when he was in Tekken 6, he was in Tank 2. And then for Tekken 7, they did the sex change. Uh, he wasn't very popular, so they introduced his boss, Master Raven, a lady. It was kind of cool, used a sword a lot, was a very strong character. But now it's back to Raven again, and he's been training, and he's stronger than ever. I mean, you can see the size of that arm, Jesus Christ. Uh, I question the natty status, actually, of a lot of characters in this game. Um, but uh, the thing with Raven is that... You can actually capture this character uh, perfectly by saying this. Half the move list is very tricky to use and implement and requires a lot from you piloting the character. Half of it is the most gimmicky, bullshit, bullshit set of tools you'll see in Tekken 8. So it's this, it's this duality of like, ah, oh, tricky and then just super, you know, random bullshit go at your opponent and they just go, oh, what the fuck? Double backflip, unblockable, teleport, you know, it's like... Um, so it's this mix of like tricky and uh, bullshit, uh, I would say, about Mr. Raven. And then we're gonna do what I think is his boss, right? <laughs> Fighting style. Super spy! <laughs> I haven't seen this before. He's not a spy. He's a super spy. Oh god, this is this is incredible writing on behalf of the game designers. Uh let's see. But I think on law for some reason it doesn't say Jit Kundo, it just says martial arts for some reason on his fighting style, which is also perplexing. Uh, but you can see there he's 188, so I can say this straight up. Tall man. Tall man, and also uses a uh, sword, gun, knife. He has a ton of reach. A ton of fucking reach. Some of his attacks, like he straight up swords immediately and it's, it reaches across the stage. And it's lightning fast. And you ha he can actually shoot his gun as a projectile. Super annoying for the opponent. Uh, has rush down mix-ups. Teleport evasiveness that he can do at a moment's notice, has multiple stances. Uh, guard breaking attacks with the sword. Super tricky bullshit, but also really strong counter -it utility. So if he knows your timing, he has very, a very strong counter -it game. Involving evasive sweeps, like a Lars style down back four. Um, or, you know, strong counter -it mids that are safe on block, that have a lot of reach. Um, but, uh, but still, a little bit of a tricky move set to get the most out of it. Um, but, uh, I can't stress enough how, how much reach the dude has, though. So, it's gonna be a very tough character to play against, uh, as well. Uh, and now I'm gonna talk about Shaheen. This is a character that uh, almost didn't exist for me in Tekken 7. A lot of people felt the same way, like... Oh god, it's... Anytime you saw him, you were like, Oh right, Shaheen! He was a new character for Tekken 7. Extremely unpopular. And I think it's because he's just so dry and dull. Like, his personality is... Unbelievably bland. Unbelievably bland. Outfit isn't the most interesting either. Um, they really tried, they've really tried now with A to spice up his gameplay. He's got some interesting attack, like tornado stuff. Uh, that's pretty cool. And he has a Street Fighter style charge up attack. It's like a Guile flash kick. He has to crouch and then he can do it and it's very powerful. So they really tried to add some cool stuff, you know, cool utility stuff. Um, still a little bit dull, I think. Uh, but intermediate in that he's, uh, he's painfully honest. He has a very direct approach 
uh, Tekken play style, where you, you simply outplay the opponent. But you, you have clean moves though. Strong down for one, while stunning one, jab, basic down for two, strong, solid hop kick, solid 50-50 involving a slide. Um, it's, it's easy to execute, but when you beat someone with Shaheen, you're basically being the better Tekken player. Um, so that makes him intermediate, uh, I would say. Very basic and clean approach. Basically no bullshit, I would say, on this guy. Uh, and now, <laughs> now we're gonna go to the complete opposite, because it's the... Uh, Spoa Lady. Uh, Spoa Guma, is that what it's called in Swedish? What is it called in English? When they read their ball and they can see your future. <laughs> what is that called in English? I just don't, I just know what it's called in Swedish. Well, uh, I think she's the most badass and coolest and most beautiful lady in Tekken 8. I really like Zafina. Uh, but Zafina is also cheese incarnate. Uh, I put her in intermediate because it's a little bit this Huarang situation where you kind of have to know what you're doing and you need to spend quite a bit of time with this character getting to know her moveset and her free stances. Uh, Scarecrow, Mantis, and Tarantula. If you don't know what she can do in all of those stances and how to use it well, like, you're gonna have a tough time. But when you do, it's just it's just cheese incarnate. Your, your opponent just gets uh, absolutely killed, roasted, barbecued, blow, blown up for free. Uh, she has arguably the strongest evasion in the game, I would say, after Xiaoyu. Any, press, any button she presses, she evades a ton. She has very strong movement to move away and control space. Um, but yeah, just unbelievably cheesy attacks. And it's also a very unpopular character. So your opponent always... Your opponent, if you play Zafina, will, will find themselves in a position where they're going up against a character that requires an unbelievable amount of knowledge and labbing and understanding to counter. But they never get the opportunity to learn anything about it because uh, she's so rare. She's so rare. Um, so it's just, yeah, this this is a W printing machine, like uh, in my opinion. And uh, it's good that we're doing Xiaoyu now, uh, straight up after that, because it's it's literally the exact same. You're going to have to spend some time uh, labbing Xiaoyu when you play her. You will create flowcharts. A flowchart is a predetermined sequence of attacks where you do A into B into F into A. And you do that over and over because you notice when you did it the first time that Oh, that, that has, this has a great uh, success ratio. Everyone seems to eat when I do this into this into this. That's a flowchart. Predetermined sequence of attacks that has a high uh, chance of succeeding and confusing the opponent. Playing Xiaoyu is going to the Xiaoyu Discord and saying, Hey, Xiaoyu mains, all five of you, uh, what are good flowcharts? And Benny, Billy, Bob, you're gonna go, And they'll give you a list of flowcharts. And then you're going to learn these, and then you're gonna do them on, on your opponents, and they're all going to die. Because yet again, a very rare character to see. I think she was actually dead last in the network test and in the beta, the least played character, and I shit you not, the hardest matchup to learn in the game. This is the hardest matchup to learn in the game. It's an interesting thing with Xiaoyun that I understand a lot about Tekken, I've been doing this for a long time, and this is cool because with this character, the most impressive thing about Xiaoyu gameplay is seeing someone counter her. It's not seeing a Xiaoyu master play her. The real cool thing is seeing someone, the opponent, perfectly counter Xiaoyu. That is, that's pure beauty due to the difficulty of countering her bullshit, her stances and all of her tools. Not only is it super difficult to do, but it's also your lowest priority. Everyone else is more pop popular, right? 
and easier to deal with. But when someone hard counters Xiaoyu, you just know that person is a pure Tekken master. Not only has he or she learned to counter every character in the game, but he even Xiaoyu. Uh, so I've always felt that that's the coolest aspect of a character, seeing someone counter her really well. But so, yeah, the hardest character to play against due to... If you don't understand this specific golden rule of playing against Xiaoyu, and this is the golden rule that someone told me 10 years ago, never press against her. Never press against Xiaoyu. Stand there patiently and don't move around too much. Let her do her things and just block. Again, don't try to counter her, just block. And then when you see your opening, and you're going to have to learn what these are, do your mid check. And uh, with my characters, like Kazuya, this is down for four. First hit of Tsunami. It's, it's a mid with a, with a very low hitbox, but also hits quite far out. And this is to catch her out of AOP and most of her attacks, which is she always recovers very low, so you just check like that. And then you take your momentum. If you don't understand this simple rule, you basically will never win. How many people do you think know about this? How many people do you think have a lot of patience compared to, oh, I would like to press some buttons? Yeah, people tend to want to press buttons. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, I would say, again, uh, Cheese Incarnate will win a lot, but again, you need to learn the flowcharts. Um, but again, you also have to understand that. I say this about Xiaoyu and Zafina, but if, but if you're gonna go to EVO and you wanna play in the top 8, are you going to have to be a Tekken master and have strong basic skill fundamentals and know all of the matchups in the game? Of course, of course. But, I think it's more interesting to talk about you. You. Not top EVO finalists. You. And how you are going to play the game. And the reality for you is that, yeah, these, these characters will just... Uh, absolutely blow you up. And there was something else I was gonna say about them. Um... Maybe I'll think about it later. But yeah, I, f I just think that conversation is more interesting. How, how do we handle the these characters? Um, oh, oh, I was gonna say that... Uh, th these, when, you, when people play these characters, right? They don't, they don't really know the matchups in the game. Because all they rely on is you not knowing their character. And they take momentum, and they do stuff, and they, they win. Um, so with these characters, it's like, how well do you know her and her flowcharts, rather than how well do you know the other characters? Whereas when you play these other characters, like for example, Paul, or Law, or Shaheen, you're gonna really want to know how the other characters play, right? But this is also where, if your character is really popular, uh, even though he's super strong, People are going to do better against you because you're so popular, so everyone knows your tricks, right? So the more popular you are, the more you are going to get countered, even though you are SS tier, right? So that's also something important to think about. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk about... Um, hmm, who do I do now? Nina. Uh, Nina is a pressure goddess. Uh, has the most annoying strings in the game. I put her in intermediate, but for me she was the easiest character to get a high rank on in Tekken 7. Her and her sister, Anna. But again, there's this duality to the character where it can be the easiest character in the game. But if you go in into higher ranks or you play high level play, it suddenly gets much trickier. Uh, Nina has absurd strings. She, she has a lot of strings that are that a monkey can do. You know, you just mash them out, but they're very hard for the opponent to counter. Very hard to counter. Uh, but the reason I put her here and not in beginner is because she also has a lot of interesting stance cancels and cancels in general. Uh, 
but takes a little bit of brain power to apply. And also, there is quite a lot of mechanical skills, so that's execution, if you really want to get serious about it with Nina. Uh, so again, there's, a, there's an interesting duality to the character, but pressure monster, and most people, you're just gonna blow them up for free, is my guess. So now we're gonna talk about Yoshi, who in my opinion is cooler than ever in... Uh, in Tekken 8, and I love the Soul Edge thing he does, you know, his sword is alive uh, and in Heat, uh, the sword attacks steal health from the opponent you get this Soul Onimusha Soul effect where you hit them and then uh, life energy, life force leaves their body and goes into Yoshi and he regains health and the wind pose where he's like, oh no, the sword is trying to control him and he has to fight it off, it's like, it's re really cool and I like seeing his human fingers it's the first time we see anything human about Yoshi since what, like Tekken 1 or Tekken 2, I think. Uh, I think it's Tekken 2. So I, I think Yoshi is really cool. Uh, Yoshi is the definition of a clown. Uh, Yoshi is a troll character. He has... His entire move list was created basically for the purpose of annoying the opponent as much as possible. The, the thing with Yoshi is that if the opponent is blocking, they die because everything is unblockable and unseeable. <laughs> and homing, <laughs> you die. But if you press buttons into him, you also die because he has a six frame startup attack called Flash where he goes, Hoogie! and And now it, it no, wait, it doesn't launch anymore. Sorry, uh, my mistake. I don't want to spread misinformation. They nerfed it. It doesn't launch. It, gets, it gives a guaranteed back to two. But still does a ton of damage. So the thing with Yoshi is that you can't block, you die. You can't attack, you die. Uh, so I love Yoshi fights because both, uh, both players just look like absolute idiots. Absolute buffoon clowns. Because Yoshi's just doing his stuff, ah, flying across the screen, ah, unblockable, bagoosh, and opponent either gets uh, killed by unblockables, or you whiff an attack and Yoshi kills you, or you press into him, you get flashed, and, and he has a disgusting uh, vortex, because you, you get knocked down, you try and stand up, he does an unblockable sword sweep, and it's just, it's such a clown show. But again, the Yoshi player has to lab his stuff. He needs to know about 20 different flowcharts. And then you do your flowcharts. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit demanding, but... Yeah, your opponent... Yoshi is not going to be a priority matchup to learn, and you're going to get so much for free playing him. Uh, and now we're going to go to Lily. Let's see... Oh... Oh no, sorry. So, Lily is... This is an interesting one, because this is a character you'd think is like super cheap. Super cheesy. Uh, you'd almost think like Asuka territory, where she presses stuff and she evades a ton and she launches you for free. Um, you know, cartwheel spamming, strings. Uh, but but an interesting thing here is that Lily to be truly effective like you really need strong basic skills and fundamentals in Tekken uh, So that's why I put her in intermediate and not in easy um, And this is something I observed a lot in Tekken 7 that Lily players that reached high ranks like they were exceptionally strong Tekken players Super high on knowledge. They know all of the basics, fundamentals, apply them really well. Like timing, movement, spacing, mix-up. Um, and their matchup knowledge. You know, because she has very strong defensive utility. With punish and also her punishment. She has one of the best 12 frame punishes in the game, like infinite reach. So if you have a lot of matchup knowledge, like holy shit, does she reward you. And she has some of the best movement, so again, you want to have good movement, move around, make opponent whiff, and then punish them. 
And Vera relies a lot more than you think on single strikes. Strong counter it, forward four. Uh, mixing lows with mids. Um, has to throw a lot of strong homing attacks to make you respect her mix-ups because she can be quite linear. Um, but uh, yeah, has some cheese, but uh, truly a character that in the end rewards uh, strong Tekken players. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I put her in intermediate. Uh, and now we're gonna talk about uh, Devil Jin. And this is going to be the first uh, advanced character. Uh, with Devil Jin, I love what I do. I'm getting serious. We're getting to Devil Jin. I, I had to sit up here on my chair. Uh, God damn it, doesn't he look cool in this game? Uh, so, this is the first character I put in advanced, and this is an expert character. Uh, so, why is that? Uh, relies almost exclusively. They've added some interesting shenanigans to him and tricks, but he basically relies on pure tech and fundamentals. And that's going to be the case for pretty much every character I list here in Advanced. You're not going to succeed with a character unless you have really strong fundamentals in Tekken, right? So you need very strong matchup knowledge, being able to apply punishment, understanding how to punish, understanding with punish, and that means understanding movement, strong movement, and that transition into spacing, understanding how far do my attacks reach, how do I move to make someone whiff, how do I move against Jin? Do I step right? Right? It's like understanding that and understanding timing. Recognizing an opponent's patterns. Like, okay, he likes to... He does a down for one, and then he likes to wait exactly one second, and then he does a back one. But, but you can... If you're strong enough at Tekken, and you have this instinct, and you can train this, you can see players' patterns in terms of timing. And then you interrupt and you counter hit. Uh, all of the Mishimas have always been timing characters. Um, and Devil Jin is no exception here in Tekken 8. He relies on... I mean, his key attack is a Just Frame, the Electric Wind God Fist. He relies still on Wave Dash mix-ups. Uh, Hell Sweep while standing 2. Hell Sweep is very strong here. Uh, and then... Um, uh, God, what was I going to say? Yeah, Electric traditional Mishima gameplay uh, is very all around. He has a lot of uh, utility in his moveset that you're going to have to explore. Uh, and then you have the Morning Crow mix-ups now. And you have the Shackle to control the, the neutral, right? It's a crazy neutral he has in this game. Uh, the mental stack, like, Devil Jin is a character now where he can stand 5 meters away from the opponent. And you gotta, like, tense up a little bit when you're on the receiving end, because he has so many ways of get getting in on you. Instantaneously. Shackle, Morning Crow, Weivu in, Ford Ford Four. Um, but again, if you're not careful as a Devil Gym player, you will get killed. You'll get floated out of stuff, you'll get stepped. Shackle loses to sidestep. Shackle, if it's ducked, is super minus. Super minus. Um, so you have to be very careful, uh, extremely demanding character to play, super heavy execution, like, getting a good electric, good wave and wave dash cancels on both sides, it usually takes people years. Ye legit takes years for most people. Or they buy a really nice keyboard or whatever. Um, but so, a very fun character, uh, very demanding, very all around, has some really cool attacks. Uh, Devil Jin is just straight up really cool. If you like legacy Mishima stuff, and then combined with some new, you know, chaotic devil stuff, like, uh, yeah, you just can't go wrong with, uh, with Devil Jin. Um, so now we're going to talk about Reyna, and this is our final newcomer. Uh, well, Hayachi's daughter, right? Uh, female Mishima, really like her. She's really cool. Uh, she is the most complicated newcomer of all time. More complicated than Steve. They've never added a character like this. So she's gonna be really hard to play, and 
don't get me wrong, she has a ton of stances and strings that can cheese you to death. She can do that stuff, like knowledge check, string bullshit. She can cheese you to death. But I put her in advanced because I believe that if someone wants to pick her up and truly master her, Oh my god, the amount of time you are going to have to put into that character to really be able to utilize all of her aspects efficiently. Not only are you looking at Legacy Mishima gameplay with uh, electric wave mix-ups into classic Hellsweep mid mix-up, um, you know, and again, you're gonna do that on both sides. You are also looking at a character that tries to mimic some Heihachi rushdown gameplay with strings and strong single hits, but also build some momentum. But you're also looking at a super stance heavy character that resembles Lydia a bit, where she goes from stance to stance. She links attacks into stances or links the stances together and chains them uh, into some very interesting mix ups. Very interesting mix-ups, and you're mixing that with a ton of string utility that she has in the neutral. And she also can do single hits that have built-in cancels. Uh, like, for example, she has an attack where she does a forward roll into a lower mid. This can be cancelled into jumping status, into jumping attacks. She has multiple of these special cancels in involving certain attacks. And then she also has multiple interesting parries. Uh, uh, and specifically, she has a F Street Fighter Third Strike style parry where if you tap forward, she does a specific movement going in. If you do this, I think it's honestly frame perfect. It's super strict. You tap forward on your opponent's attack, she will parry the attack and go into it, will blue spark, and she gets a plus 10 advantage into uh, Wind God Step mix up. Yeah, she has that. Yep. Um, and again, like, her, her execution is super high, combo execution is super high. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't stress enough how many aspects she has to her. She has 140 attacks in her very first iteration. In her very first game, she has 140 attacks. Like, uh... Unbelievably demanding. Again, doesn't have to be. You can pick her up and do well. Like, just mash people to death if you want to. But to truly master her, the amount of execution and sheer raw complexity of a character to me is just like... This is the most difficult character they've ever added. I think. Uh, and there's a case for her being the most difficult character in this game, I think. Uh, so the next one we're gonna look at is my main, uh, Kazuya Mishima. Uh, let's see. Kazuya is a, is a very fun character to play, and uh, when you look at it very superficially, he has, he feels like the simplest character to play. I hear this a lot from people, and it tech is complicated stuff, and I get it that a lot of people might, uh, I mean, get the wrong idea with him. They're like, oh, it's so easy, all you do is, you just do a health sweep or you do forward forward free. And then they just tech roll and you spam health sweep so you do forward forward free. And it's so simple. It's so simple. Uh, the thing is, when, when you play him a bit, uh, like, I remember fondly what it was like playing green ranks with Kazian. It's like you're trying to play these mix-ups. But the problem is, people never <laughs> stand still and look at you. They just go, oh, I'm gonna guard now. They don't tend to respect you too much or look at you. Rather, they, they try and do attacks. And when your mix-up, your key mix-up is 20 frame startup, it gets a little bit complicated now. And also, if they know to step, it gets a little bit complicated. Kazuya requires very strong timing, very strong understanding of fundamentals of Tekken. He also suffers greatly due to the fact that having a simple game plan and being a very popular character is not a good idea in the end because it means everyone knows the matchup. Everyone knows exactly what to expect from that guy and it's 
Duria! Or it's I go in and I do a hell sweep or a mid. Everyone knows exactly what you're about to do, and that's not exactly a strength. So you need to be very smart in applying this simple playstyle. Um, so gotta be really smart there. Poking is weak, which is a really big problem. Uh, needless to say, uh, very, very high in, uh, in execution. Uh, strongest electric in the game. Can come out at 13 frames if you do a perfect electric. Um, and uh, hardest execution in the game due to... Uh, he has no e easy mode launcher. Uh, when someone's minus 15, Dalgin can 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 rather than electric. He can can can. Reyna can down for two, 15 frame mid launcher. Kazuya, when he wants to launch someone, has to do an electric. This might not sound like a big deal, but it increases the execution requirements many times over. It's, uh, it's hard to understand for people who don't play Mishimas, but even something as, e as easy as minus 15 is actually hard to electric, because you can't buffer electrics. You have to wait out the block stun perfectly, and then input the electric. Try to punish a rage art with electric with Kazuya. You, you, you'd think it's easy. Boom! Cutscene. Oh, he's doing a rage art, and I'm blocking. I mean, you block it, and when there's a really awkward block stagger, you gotta wait it out perfectly, and then Duria! It's actually so hard that even a lot of elite Mishima players, and these are these are the best in Europe. Some of them they don't even they don't even go for electric, and I don't either most of the time. I do downward one two, uh, or I do a throw. Throws now uh, are uh, unescapable if you punish a rage art, you know, or power crush with them, unescapable. And his two four throw gives good oki. So. His exe execution requirements are absolutely stratospheric. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if anyone comes close. And his uh, optimal combos are very tough to do. They involve wave dash cancels. But also the game plan, again, I have to stress, it might sound simple. And it's beautiful in its simplicity. But it, it it's really hard to execute. It's, uh, it's just not as simple as you think. Um... Everyone knows what you're trying to do, and no one is going to respect you. Everyone is going to try and jab you out of it, or as soon as they start stepping you, it's... Yeah, you have to adjust for that. Uh, was made a little bit simpler due to the Devil Fist, uh, which is a very strong neutral tool. Infinite reach, safe mid, heat engager, launches in heat, while it's very strong in heat, and it tracks well to both sides. Um... But a super fun character to play. And he's so cool. He is the most badass character in Tekken. Granted, I'm, I'm, I'm very biased here, but I, I love the guy. And I can't wait to see him in story mode. But so again, uh, very straightforward character. But at the same time, being straightforward bites him in the ass. And it's and, and highest execution in the game, I would say. Um, so very fun, tough character. Uh, and now we're going to talk about... Brian Fury. Uh, Brian is super cool. Super cool. And he, he's another character where a lot of people think like, but, but, but he's super easy. I play in green ranks and I just mix my snake edge with orbital. Uh, so step one, never ever do a snake edge. Never do a snake edge unless you're doing a huge uh, giga chad power move like a taunt into snake edge more effective than you'd think um brian is extremely high in execution due to core circle forward core circle back everywhere he also relies on pretty strict cancels uh like his back free cancels um uh, he has tough hit confirms like his down forward one 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 two gatling can hit confirm that that is tough to do um, his, his combos revolve around dashing in, micro dashing, double knees, like, uh, while standing 3-4. He has much more execution than you think. It is tough playing Brian. And in my opinion, any serious Brian is going to learn taunt into back 4 at the wall. Any, any dude, or gal, or gal, that's serious about Brian will learn taunt back 4. And that's a 
chew, it's a chewing gum. That's a true just frame. True just frame, very, very strict. Well, it's actually, uh, well, no, no, it's a true just frame. It's, it's super hard to do, needless to say. Uh, execution amounts are really high, but also uh, just rewards people who are very strong Tekken players. Timing oriented, spacing, keep out, uh, understanding space control, shutting down movement wi with your homing. When is my opponent going to press? That's the entire concept of that character. When is my uh, opponent going to press? That's it. You need to outplay him in Tekken. That's it. You have to know when he's going to press. And he can't have reads on you, right? No conventional Tekken tools. No down for one, no down for two, no hop kick. Shit jab, absolute one of the worst jabs in the game. You must, you might think all of that doesn't matter. Why well, doesn't have a down for two? He doesn't have a down for one. He doesn't have a hop kick. The universal Tekken stuff that almost every character has makes your game life so much easier. So much easier. A free mid check. A hop kick beats lows launching minus only minus thirteen. It's it doesn't have that stuff. Um, it, it makes it so much more complicated playing a character that doesn't have that. Um, but yeah, rewards extremely strong Tekken players, uh, relies on very strong mind games, understanding timing, and super high in terms of mechanical skill. Uh, yeah, Brian is a truly an expert character. Uh, and... Oh god, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I just realized, I was like, oh, I only have two characters left. And then I realized I haven't spoken about Jack and Dragonov yet. And they're intermediate characters. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do them last. Uh, oh well. Shit happens. Very often on this channel. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do Steve now. Uh, don't like that outfit too much. This one is better. Yeah, I like the red and the white. Uh, Steve, unbelievably unique. Uh, a character that almost takes it to the extreme. He's probably the most unique character in the game. Doesn't have left kick and right kick. You, pl I mean, th this, this, make no mistake. One of the hardest characters to play in this game. Way up there. A truly expert character. Um, <laughs> where do you even begin? Yeah. Press 3 or 4 button. He doesn't do a left kick or a right kick. He does stances. He does duck in, weave, sways. These, ha these are stances that have uh, multiple attacks to them. Uh, doesn't rely on conventional 50-50 is the counter it character and relies on pressure into stances. Uh, Peekaboo and, and Flicker. Uh, these have uh, really powerful attacks. Is incredibly safe, unbelievably safe, while he's threatening, threatening you with the best counter it's in the game. But gives the opponent insane safety as well. So it's a very interesting matchup. Steve is super safe, while using super high reward utility, right? The, count the, the best counter it in the game. But at the same time, opponent also in this matchup is super safe because he doesn't really have a, 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 a launcher. A standing, when he's standing, he doesn't have a normal hit launcher to launch the opponent. He has to actually manually go into peekaboo and now he can mid launch, natural. So fascinating matchup in that regard. Uh, and now has the very powerful Lionheart stance, where he threatens uh, a very fast guard break. Where if they block it, he gets 12 frames, and he gets a guaranteed 2-1 into peekaboo into pressure. So opponent kind of wants to duck that or step, and then he has a mid from Lionheart homing heat engager, right? That's safe on block. Um, so that's a very interesting guard pressure 50-50. He also makes it difficult to guard against him, not only due to the sheer frames and rush down, but also when he ducks in, he can press forward 2 and do an extended duck in 
to do a high impact move that's plus on guard, it's a high, but also chips a ton. Chips a ton. And uh, many of his attacks pressure you forward, like 1 to 1 or peekaboo 4 to 1. When you block these, there's a huge guard impact and you fly back a lot. And there he can, through this, he can pressure you into the wall. And at the wall, he has a much stronger 50 50. He can apply the stomp well now, it has very little reach. And he also has a throw that has a very small break window, 15 frames, normal is 20. And he can just slam you into the wall for a guaranteed 1-1-2. One, one, and now he can really pressure you. And with Core Circle Ford 1, there are high execution demands going from one stance into another. And his Core Circle Ford 1, uh, that you can buffer for attacks, is one of the best mids in the game. Super long reach, mid, heat engager. It's only minus 3 on block when you go into flicker. Uh, infinite reach. Um, but super complicated playstyle, super complicated moveset. Has uh, an answer for almost every situation, but you gotta. But m many of the best buttons are locked behind stances. Uh, rewards strong timing, simply outplaying the opponent. Uh, gotta counter the fact that you, you have such poor punishment. Um, unbelievably demanding character to play. Um, truly a big brain character. So the last character is going to be, well, well, the real last character is going to be... Um, has my recording bugged? Uh, geez, give me a second here. I hope not. Ah, okay, it hasn't bugged. Okay, jeez. I'm so sorry about that. I got a bit worried as it, uh, it just froze here. Uh... Let's see, we're gonna talk about Lee. So he was the last character I was gonna talk about, but as I missed uh, Jack and Dragonov, I'm gonna do those as well. Um, but so Lee, also an expert character. Uh, you gotta understand that when I call a character like an expert or advanced character, all of these characters we have an advanced, advanced. Uh, a lot of people when they hear, hear an advanced difficult character, all they think about is superficial stuff that everyone understands. Oh, high execution, high mechanical skill. Oh, there's a, there are tough inputs, that's a hard character. And it's like, I put these characters in advanced, not only because of execution, but also something that might be harder to understand and takes more time to understand. The game plan is really difficult. It's also strategically really difficult. And uh, Lee, again, I try to explain this on every character, but uh, yeah, it's going to be very apparent with Lee as well. Like, you probably understand that there are really strict execution demands on Lee. Like, a ton of his attacks, his key attacks, it's like, it's just frame inputs, pretty much. Uh, acid rain. Uh, back two loops are very strict. I got a down free counter hit. Oh, the pickup here is very strict. Up forward 3 4, forward 4 4. Very strict back 3 3 pickup. Oh, I want to use, of course, you want to use your 11 frame counter hit launcher, right? Uh, machine gun kicks cardinal. Tough to execute. And when you get a dash in again, back 3 3. Very tough pickup. It's just, uh, there's a ton of difficult stuff with Lee. Uh, and also the back to misstep cancel into while stunning 2, which you're gonna want to learn. All of that is really tough. But what makes him really hard to play is just the game plan. Like, you love it when people press into you, but a lot of, a lot of beginners and intermediate, they press more than they should, right? Uh, highly aggressive players. You block and you punish, or they press into your counter hits, and you're like, yeah! Well, this doesn't feel that difficult. Well, as soon as you play against a strong player who's patient and has a lot of defense, suddenly Lee is excruciatingly difficult to play because of his super poor mix-up utility. So classic stuff like throw game and 50-50 is so crap on Lee. You only have a 1-2 throw that doesn't do a whole lot, 
And then you do, um, you try to 50-50, but the mid option is weak, and the low option is pretty weak. Slide doesn't even knock down anymore. So you're gonna do your, your lows like Damak 3-4 or Hitman 4, but they still rely on counter hit to get a lot of stuff done. So it's like, so now you gotta be like, you gotta be really smart in how you try and pressure with, with these lows, but also you have to systematically work your way into trying baiting the opponent into pressing into you again, because that's where your stuff is like 500% better, right? So it's very, very tricky to play Lee for many reasons. Uh, truly an advanced character. This was gonna be it for the video, but we missed uh, Intermediate Jack and Dragonov, so let's do them. Uh, this is gonna look so weird in the timestamps. Uh, so Jack, uh, one of the most honest characters in Tekken 7, relies on super basic poking and mix-ups. Uh, for those of you who like character, like, he can't sidestep too much, he's so big, he, you know, he's big as a bus, but uh, he can backdash really well, he has a strong backdash, and he plays a, a really strong 2D game with Tekken, in that you backdash, and then you you have really long arms, and you do your down for 2 uh, launcher, that you can now, it's a 15 frame launcher mid, that you can now charge up as well, you do down for 2, charge up 1, and now you do like a hundred plus damage from a 15 frame launcher. So again, struggles with sidesteps, but controlling space 2D style, forward and backwards, really well, and long arms, and he really... Yeah, it's a very interesting way of playing Tekken there. Um, and has very strong pokes, very strong mids, decent enough... Um, uh, uh, it's a really good low in uh, full crouch down back one, which is a uh, safe on block low, although it's changed a little bit now in that he has follow-ups. Um, I'm just gonna say super strong poking, very strong throw game, super high damage, like he has launching throws, he has a full throw game. Um, his damage from any launcher is ridiculously high, and he also has very strong stance pressure now, as they baked Giga-style mix-ups into him and made the mix-up stronger. So you can do something like forward free, mid-check into heavy stance mix-ups, and it's, uh, uh... Yeah, it's, uh, really strong pressure. Um, so there's quite a lot to know about Jack. Uh, sort of a hybrid now between uh, traditional Tekken fundamentals and his own unique, clean gameplay and brutal, oppressive stance mix-ups, super high damage. Very interesting character, very charming, fun to play, and my son's favorite character. Doesn't play a lot of Tekken, but he loves Jack. Um, and now, now it's for real, the last one. Last character I'm gonna talk about is Dragonov. Uh, so, Dragonov is... A very, very honest character. He has a very, very direct approach. And relies on stressing the opponent with momentum. He's like an unstoppable train. A force of nature. He closes... Is he never gonna look at me? I haven't seen this before. He won't even look at me. He just broke my heart. I love Dragonov, but he doesn't love me. 98 kilograms. And again, 192. Yeah, he's a big, big lad with huge reach. But so again, closes the gap on the opponent with while running two. And then super oppressive frames. So many attacks with really oppressive frames. Daring, daring the opponent to try and take their turn. And not get counter hit. Not much of a 50-50 utility. It's more pressuring with highs and mids. Uh, trying to score a counter hit. And then strong throw game. One break, two break, one plus two break, really strong throws. One plus two gives really good Oki. One and two throws come out one frame faster than typical throws. So that's also a really nice strength. He's also cool to play in that he has a very varied uh, move list. You can play him with three attacks if you want to. While running two, back one plus two and down two. 
But then you have so much other utility. You have an orbital, you have a backswing blow, you have a snake edge. A snake edge you can cancel into a crouch throw. You have an eye poke that's interesting on block. You have, did I say backswing blow? Yeah, uh, and you have a million setups for it. You have a million interesting strings. You have strings that go into his tackle, ambush, ambush tackle. Uh, ambush tackle has really cool mix-ups. He um, can roll on the ground into tackle. Uh, he has an unbreakable throw where he jumps into a scissor takedown. Uh, honestly, he has so much cool stuff that you can be really creative with and try and overwhelm your opponent with. So there's a lot of knowledge check utility. Oh, and in this game, he hits like a truck. Any launcher you do, his combos are so beefed up. And he's the only character to have a wall throw now that goes into a, a, a normal wall combo. See, it, it legit, he does like a double wall combo on you. If you don't use the bound in the open, you, you save it for the wall. That wall throw acts like a wall combo. It does like 30 damage plus. And then you do your wall combo that also hits like a truck. So it's like, uh, and it's look, it looks so cool when you do that on the opponent, so. Uh, and he has strong uh, defense, strong movement, <laughs> and a very long reach, uh, down for two 15 frame mid launcher, that also launches crouchers, but it's minus 12, so. Quite all around, but, it, but in his very unique way, but mostly pressure monster with insane frames, and very long reach, long limbs, very long limbs, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was my introduction to all of the characters in Tekken 8. I tried to keep it as brief as I could and still um, try and tell you how the characters are very unique in this game. Everyone is very, um, everyone is very much, uh, uh, sorry, making a quick, quick note here. Everyone is very much their own character with their own approach. Much more so than in Tekken 7. Much more so. Um... And yeah, uh, there's a lot to like about these characters. There are so many of them are so cool, so interesting. But I hope you got a good idea of like, who's good for beginners? Why are they good for beginners? Who's intermediate? And if you have a favorite character that you got to know a little bit about them. Um, but yeah, uh, and I really hope you have fun with Tekken 8. I absolutely love this game and I find it so much better than Tekken 7. In every single aspect and also in this aspect how unique the characters are, and how much they, they do their own thing compared to other characters. In Tekken 7, they blended together just a little bit more, but here it's like they, they truly are unique. Um, but so I hope this was a good explanation to you, a good talk, and uh, yeah, I hope I see you on the next video. Have a great day. Take care.